question we're asked to solve the following equation. So uh, we're asked to solve pi subtract 3 arc cos theta is equal to 0. Okay, so the key thing to think about here, um, it's just a different way of writing it, this arc cos means cos inverse cos of theta. Okay, so arc cos and inverse cos of theta mean the same thing. So what we're solving, I prefer in this way, I prefer to write pi subtract 3 the inverse cos of theta is equal to zero. So we're trying to solve that for theta, obviously, because thetas are unknown there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this to both sides. So pi is going to be equal to three inverse cos of theta. I'm going to divide both sides by three. So pi by three is going to be equal to the inverse cos of theta. And inverse cos, uh, to undo that, I'm going to apply cos to both sides. So if I apply cos to inverse cos, I just get theta and I get cos of pi by 3 here. And cos of pi by 3 uh, is equal to a half. Okay, so theta is equal to a half. Now then we check that that is actually true. So our calculator must be in radians mode. Check your calculator is in radians mode. So you go uh, shift setup and you press 4 for radians. So uh, what I'm going to type is in pi subtract 3 the inverse cos of a half, I said 0 0.5 and hopefully I get zero, indeed I get zero, so I know I've got the right answer. It says sketch on the same diagram the, the, the following curves. Um, so why is the arc cos of x subtract one for zero, for x between zero and two, and why is equal to the square root of x add two for x bigger than negative two? Okay, so let's uh, copy this down here so we can see it all the time. Now what I wanna do is I wanna take our time to draw this graph and this graph just because I think it is quite complicated. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my time and I'm going to show you how to draw just a general arc cos x graph. So i.e. what I'm going to try and show you how to draw is y is equal to the inverse cos of x graph. Now we need the normal cos of x graph to be able to do that. Now cos of x we know goes between um, 1 and negative 1 so the cos x graph looks something like this. Okay. Whereas this, this point here would be pi by 2, 0. This point here would be 3 pi by 2, 0. This point here would be pi negative 1. This point here would be 2 pi 1. And this point here would be 0, 1. Okay, so that's the y is equal to the cosine of x graph. Now notice I've drawn this in a particular way. Pi by 2, if we work out pi by 2, pi by 2 is 1.57. I wanted this distance here, which is 1.57, to look bigger than this distance here, which is 1, on purpose, because it is bigger. So it just helped me draw the graph better when I'm drawing the line y is equal to x. So let's uh, try and reflect this in the line y is equal to x. So the inverse graph is always a reflection in the line y is x. So this point here would now become up here. It would be 0 pi by 2. And this point here would come down here and it would be 1, 0. And that helps us get our uh, working in. So it would look something, I hope you can see, like this. And it would go off like that. So that's in general how to draw the inverse cos graph. Now here we want the inverse cos x subtract 1. So we want all of this shifted along one unit. So let's just, let's hopefully now we can just draw it without the original graph. We want this type of a graph shifted along by one unit. So it's going to cross here at 2, 0. And it, it, it wants it between x is 0 and and 2, so we want to stop it over here somewhere. So it's going to go up like this, and it's going to stop up here at this point up here. So that is something like the graph y is equal to r cos of x subtract 1. If we put 0 in, r cos of negative 1, let's just type in the coordinates, inverse cos of negative 1, you should know what that is, is going to be pi. So this point here would be um, 0 pi. This point here is 2, 0. That looks like as good as we can get for that graph uh, for 0 less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 2. Okay, now on the same diagram, it wants the graph of uh, x, the root of x at uh, 2. Well, let me just take a second to just show you that graph on its own, and then I'll go back up. 
this is the graph y is equal to x squared. y equals square root of x is the reflection of this in the line y is equal to x, so it looks something like this. For it to be a function, uh, so this is y is equal to the square root of x, that's just the reflection of this. Now for it to be a function, it can't be, it, uh, we want it to be uh, 1 to 1 or um, many to 1. We can't have it 1 to many. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this part of the graph there and it's going to just look like that. And if we were to actually make that a graph, uh, the square root of x, where is it? Add 2, so if we have an add 2 there, what we're actually doing is we're shifting this graph 2 units that way. So this point here would no longer be 0, 0, it would be negative 2, 0 like that. Okay, so drawing this on here, hopefully we could find ourselves over to negative 2, 0 like that. And we would get our graph looking something like this. So this would be y is equal to the square root of x add 2. Let's think where it crosses this axis here just to get those numbers right. When y is equal to 0, um, uh, sorry, when x is equal to 0 here, this would be root 2. And root 2 is, let's just check root 2, root 2 is 1.4, which is less than pi. So this point here would be 0 root 2. So our graph looks about accurate like that. So this is our final answer, this part here. All the rest was working. So this here is our final answer. Everything else was working. It says, given that alpha is a root of this equation, show that alpha is between uh, 0 and uh, 1. So again, I'm just going to take a little um, photograph of this. So I don't have to keep going up. So I'm going to take a photograph of this here. So down here like that. So uh, we've got our, we're trying to solve this equation here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a new function, say g of x, to be equal to this function, take away this function. So I'm going to call it inverse cos of x subtract 1, take away the square root of x, add 2, like that. And I want to show that um, th if I want to show this equation has a, a solution between these two points, it's the same as showing this has a root between these two points. So I'm going to work out g of 0, I'm going to work out g of 1, and if I get a change of sign, this tells me this has a root, so this has a solution. So uh, typing in here, so just go alpha, uh, inverse cos of uh, x, subtract 1, close brackets, and then take away the square root of x add 2, so x add 2, like that. Uh, calculate, and we want to calculate it at 0, so I get 1.727, so 1.727. Hopefully, if I put 1 in, calculate 1, I get negative, yeah, negative 0 0.16. So therefore, therefore, change of sign, clearly there's a change of sign. G is continuous. The functions we're given in core 3 are always continuous. G is continuous. Therefore, uh, G has root between... Uh, 0 less than uh, alpha less than 1. Alpha is the root between those two. And so alpha is a root of the equation and 0 less than alpha less than 1. Okay, then it says use the iterative formula with x0 to find alpha to correct to three decimal places. So what we're going to do for part d uh, we, our iterative formula is xn add 1 is equal to 1 plus the cosine of the square root of xn add 2. We're going to get our calculator out and we're going to type in, we wanted our first answer to be 1, so 1 equals, so x0 equals 1. And then we just type in um, 1 add cosine of the square root of, what is it, x add 2, so you put ants add 2, like that, you press equals. So you get 0 0.839. So you write each one of these down, so x1 is 0 0.839, and you press equals again, and you get 0 0.886, so x2 is 0 0.886. Actually, we should probably go 598. I should actually go 598. I shouldn't round. 
uh, before uh, the end. So x is at 0.87232. So x3 is 0.872328. So 2328 equals again 0.8763. So x4 is 0.8763. Plus again, 0.8751, so x5 is 0.87515. And look, you get x equals 0 0.8784, so x6 equals 0 0.87549. Now you can see here that we've started repeating to three significant figures. So 0 0.875 has repeated to three significant figures. I can state that, um, going looking up here, I can state that alpha is equal to 0 0.875 to three decimal places, and I'm done.